Greetings. All right. My name is Ben, aka Downsize It, and today I'm joined by Social General Rob. Hello, how are you doing? And we are going to be unboxing the Venator expansion pack, which coincidentally is the giveaway for the month of June. Mm. Um, here at Vance at Avon Tip Ship Shop is providing this expansion for the giveaway. How you enter in, just answer the questions that I will have in my videos. Comment in the comments below. And the question for the unboxing videos are always just give me your general thoughts and comments and um, what you think about the expansion and specific cards, etc. And we might ask, ask questions as we're going along of what you think about certain cards and stuff. Just comment in the comments. Now we enter in for the giveaway. So I'm going to get that out of the way up front mm -hmm. so you guys know. And now we'll just get right in to this unboxing. And this is the expansion I just recently purchased. A local gaming store of ours, T-shirt Explosion. I've got two of these in, and I grabbed them both. Uh, so far, the only Clone Wars stuff that I have. But start expanding as we go further. It was the ones you mentioned you were interested in. But. Yeah, that's the only thing, ones that I was interested in. Yep. And I'm um, moving them around. You might add a little extras. Yep. I want the squad packs, but can't find any anywhere. Except for 60 bucks on eBay. Oh. I love price scalpers. Yes, yeah, there's a lot out there. You can look up anything. I, I even saw a starter set for the uh, Clone Wars the uh, starter set. And it was going for $114. And well, was, that's not that much in the market. It's, no, it's not that much. It's, it's $99 MSRP. So it's only a $50 market. Yeah, but still. But, uh... But the fighter upgrade packs are twenty five dollars, right? And they're going for sixty. Yeah, on eBay. So that that's ridiculous, Marco. The same thing with the upgrade card packs are going like a hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm not buying upgrades. Not actually. It's a market. twenty dollar upgrade pack, and there's yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is about an unboxing. That's right. We're not going to be ranting. ranting about price scalpers. So anyway, let's get this out here now. I really like this ship the way it looks. I've loved this ship since they released it, and yeah, the, the, the Republic has been my favorite since the Clone Wars and such. Um, I still play Rebels, don't get me wrong, but uh, so when I saw that this came out right here, look at this yeah. ship, I was like, oh you bet I'm getting that, oh you bet, and this is what actually brought me into the buying the bones. Yeah, so it's this, yeah, this is just the detailing, you get, I mean, this is like, you know, it's a miniature Star Destroyer, and you, you know, the paint scheme is a little bit more basic than it is like the Separatist paint schemes, yes. but well, the modeling is still fantastic, it's just absolutely, excuse me, fantastic modeling, and it looks like, just like on the movie, and the way I look at the paint schemes, I've seen people say they don't like it and such, I look at like it's been used um, in battle and stuff like that. Not scorch marks and stuff, but of course the paint's going to wear after a while. Um, well, I think they're just more worried about just being kind of basic compared to the separatists. Um, well, but true. I but I, I like it. I like. I like it. I like it. Just, I like it set up. Yeah. I'm actually, but you know, I'm an imperial player, so I like the gray. <laughs> so I'm actually looking forward to the imperial version of this. I hope we get an imperial version of this where it's in the gray. Like, I really do. I really hope you do. I really do. Yeah, the very like you see at the very end of uh, Revenge of the Sith, where they're at the Death Star construction, where you see the fleet of editors in the imperial yeah. gray. I'd love to get this. They do a re reprint. It does make sense. Yeah. But anyway, just as is, this is a love this model. You should be seeing the side by side comparisons by now with the Star Destroyer, the Chimera. And one thing I love about this, and actually I'll just want to do this live here as well. Uh, I was talking about this with Robbie uh, when we did our bad rep a couple days ago. I love how they kept the scaling. So, yes. That it, the Star Destroyer is still the standard, as it should be. I mean, it's the right. original. But you right. first see right. after the, <laughs> yeah. the big ship right. in Star Wars, it needs to right. be the standard. So I'm glad they didn't make this as big as the Star Destroyer because that would not have made sense. Oh, but the scaling is just right, I think. It yeah. looks like it is the progenitor to the Star Destroyer. Right. So I, I just love how, but that you can see that this evolves into this. Exactly. And I love right. how the scaling just works perfectly. Right. That it's just you know an upscale to get to this. So yeah. I really like how they did it with the scaling and then how it looks. And 
Again, just future predictions. I can't wait till I can have one of these in gray next to flying together on the on the battlefield. So, uh, and you, you should see some close-up shots coming up now, uh, preparing them as well, just to using the Chimera as the standard um, side-by-side -side comparison of the new ships. Yeah, of course, you have to use the Chimera. Of course, <laughs> it is my favorite ship in the game. So. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we'll get this set up here. Um, one thing I really like about the Venator is that it looks great on the table in pairs. So oh. This is definitely a ship uh, a teaser for the game coming up uh, <laughs> tomorrow. Actually, it'll be tomorrow. But the the backup will drop on Tuesday. Is that I ran a dual Venator list, and um, the uh, it did, they just look great. I'm having them side by side together. And they're cheap enough that it's not like trying to run dual star destroyers as the Imperials, so where you're really um, sacrificing yeah. a lot of points just to get two star destroyers on the table, so everything else Good. literally takes a hit. Good. But these things are cheap enough where you still actually feel a halfway decent fleet by yeah. having two of them on the table. Good. Good. Um, as you guys can see, the profile, I'm not going to show the profile too much because you guys know it. It's the star destroyer <laughs> profile. Fire yeah. Center. It's, I think it's exactly the same. I probably could put the cards up, but I, um, but I think it's the exact same shooting profile, but again, it makes sense. You guys get the projector to the Star Destroyer, so no surprise there. And has the, uh, the interest, it's actually interesting, it's very similar stats to the Star Destroyer. So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. The, uh, and we'll just go over the ship cards now, since we're talking about that. It's got nine hull. So, uh, Star Destroyer has 11, 11 right? Yeah. So, again, natural progression from right. 9 to 11. Shields, though, interesting, are the exact same. Four on the front, three on the side, two on the back. That's the exact same as all the Star Destroyer variants. So, mm. apparently, shielding technology did not improve. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, I guess the not. No. But, uh, no, but their engines, they actually can, uh, covered their engines. Uh, yeah, they covered the engines up better. And get a little bit bulkier. Right. So, so that it's more protected. And firepower is also very similar. So, um, so these ship cards uh, for the Venator One and Venator Two should be coming on your screen there. And I'm just going to be talking about the firepower dice real quick, just comparing them to a Star Destroyer. Mm -hmm. um, on the Venator Two, out the sides, it's the exact same as an Imperial Two Star Destroyer, Two oh, Red, Two Blue. Mm -hmm. And that's actually very nice. Yep. And just overall, just numbers of dice. The side and rear, you get. Four dice off the side for both variants, three dice out the rear for both variants. And out the front you get six dice. Whereas Imperial Star Stories you get eight, unless it's the side where you get seven. And but so again, a progression. Again, I like the how it's a progression. Mm -hmm. And you get the double dice for anti squadron mm -hmm. on the Venator. Cool. Yep, on both of them. <laughs> and you get four engineering, three command, then of course, um, what really makes these unique that I love is Venator 2, you get 5 Squadron. I love the 5 Squadron. Um, I will be playing a lot with Venator 2s. Um, I probably more than uh, Venator 1 just because I love squad play. I just love how Venator 2 is going to be just an excellent battle carrier. You know, Command 5 Squadron's base. So, my, my question. Um, back in our Midway, um, that rep, and then you were playing Midway, and you showed that the the, the you know, Imperial one could be. Uh, yep, the Imperial one. one. The Imperial yeah. ones that I made uh, as carriers. Yeah. Could be a super be carriers. Really decent carrier. Yep. Yeah. And how would you think this compared to the your midway? So this you, is. For flight, for squadron flight. Right? Yeah, so for squadron flight, this is. The Venator 2, I think I would like better. And this is the reason why. Okay. Is because uh, even though an Imperial one has uh, two offensive retrofit slots, which you want the offensive retrofit slots to boost squadron potential. Mm -hmm. um, what I did with that one, with the midway build, is I put expanded hangers to get them up to squad value five. This right. one comes with it built in. I know, yeah. So I don't need to worry about that. Right. So my offensive retrofit can go to something else, which would be the way I did something else on that one, depending right. on what I'm running. If it's Sloan, probably the reserve hanger deck. Right. Well, actually, well, for reserve hanger deck for Sloan, for this, because um, I wouldn't run Swarms, I would probably do something like boosted comms yep. or uh, something like that. Um, and 
what I think I would like about this better is to run, this is where it could get interesting because I'd have to go with the V19s because they're so cheap enough. I would really like to do dual Venator 2s. Oh. Um, so you get 10 squads base. Yeah. And I mean, if you really want to tap, I could put expanded hangar bays on here and do six Good. squads base. But the problem is, fitting 12 Republic squads with that is difficult because yeah. Republic squads are expensive. Yeah. Except for the V19, but I don't like the V19. <laughs> so it's one of those where conceptually, I would love to run dual Venator 2s. Right. But make it work practically because to get all the squads to make it worthwhile, your right. hope squads are so expensive, right? It's kind of diminishing your terms. So, 600 point game though, yes, you will definitely see dual veteran twos for sure. And you might um, see a 600 point game, though. yes. Well, in a couple of weeks, we don't have one planned yet, but we don't have one planned, but you might um, have but definitely will see one for sure. Uh, the reason also why I like the veteran two better than the Imperial one for battle carrier is that it has defensive retrofit. Okay. Imperial one star destroyers don't have defensive retrofit, so they don't have the ability to put on electronic countermeasures or re, um, 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 advanced projectors, right. um, or basically the ability to defend itself. Okay. Thermal shields, they right. Yeah. Right. Um, so they both serve by similar roles, but in mm -hmm. slightly different capacity. Okay. Um, it's easier to get multiple squad. The midway one, the reason why I like that so much is because the Empire, you get all the cheap squads with pies. Right. And you like that with Sloan. Yes. So you can really swarm it up, yeah. and, and that you can get away with that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I might try to toy around some more. I've been yeah, trying I, to theory craft sure on, on, on Ryan Kingston to get two Venator 2s with 10 to 12 squads, but being able to fit the squads is the problem. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, even not even just the four hundred point cap, but the one hundred thirty four point cap of squad no. enough for points. Yeah, it fills up really fast if you want to get decent squad. Arms are expensive. Aether sprites are expensive. Yeah. Um, so it would have to be V nineteens. It's one of those. I just I don't like V nineteens. V nineteens and Y wings maybe. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> the order two fantastic carry. I love it. I ran it as a carry for the bat rep. You guys will um, that you will see tomorrow. Combined with Venator one. Which is, I like how they both have unique roles. Venator 2, that, I mean, no one is surprised by this. Venator 2 can be the carrier. Yeah, it is exactly. a carrier. It's a carrier, carrier, carrier. Venator 1 is your battleship. Right. This thing is the heavy hitting hammer, and um, the, uh, it, the front allocation is like a Victory 1. You get the 3 red, 3 black, which yep. is always is fantastic. But the main reason why you run this, you can do it on the Victory, you can do it on the Victory 2 because they both have offensive retrofit. And we're going to get to the upgrade part of it, but it's for the spot. S P H A T. Oh, yes. Which I'm just going to call the spot. I'm trying to figure out what I'll call it. I think everybody has. Yeah, yeah. 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 Aegis side note is what I'm doing, calling it a spot. The, this thing is going to be, the Venator 1 is just going to, even without that, because this thing can still just be a powerhouse hitter. Mm -hmm. And um, I think. What I'm, you're probably going to see for me a lot on this channel when I'm running, when building my own fleets with this, is right. having a Ven 2 Ven 1 combo where the Ven 2 is a carrier and the Ven 1 is my battleship. Right. And they just go up together and yes. do the work. That so, is going to be extremely nice. Yes. And you I guys will see that tomorrow, an example of that. So, I can't wait. experimentation of that. So, it's first. It's first. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Venator, uh, there's some more combinations between the Ven 1 2. Um, it, the Ven 1 still has three squads. So if you want to run two Ven 1s, because they are cheaper, not by much, but like 100 points for the Ven 2, 90 for the Ven 1. Oh, so you're in dual Ven 1, just have light squad presence. You just run six squads. Yeah. Um, not put the spots on, because the spots actually reduce your squadron capacity. Oh, right. Because it's, it's loaded into the actual hangar bay. <laughs> so you can't, no more space for squads. Oh, it's hard, yeah. Um, but the reason why uh, th this thing is such a good uh, battleship is because of the four or three black dice out the front. Um, both ships have ordnance upgrade, so you can both put the black dice upgrades on there. Mm -hmm. But this one has the base of the disco dice out the front. You're only getting two black dice yeah. off, and only one whole zone. Uh, I'm not going to count the back. Um, but the Venator <laughs> 1, you get three black dice out the front and two black dice out of each side. So you can really, you really want to get close with the Ven 1. Right. And it has the nice combo of having ordnance and turbo lasers, so you can really, you know, do the turbo laser tower, towers for your red dice, 
and then get your um, assault probes on, assault compression right. or whatever for your black dice, mm-hmm. put your ordinance experts on here. Um, then ones, I, th- I people are, I, we're gonna, I think we're gonna see a lot of then ones that just come, just get in close and just hammer people. Oh, yes. Yeah, and I think, um, again, we're previewing a card that we'll get to it, we'll talk about it when we get to it. <laughs> the spot is, I predicted this with Robbie, the that what you see tomorrow in our posting that. I, I think we might see dual Ben ones with spots. Yes, because they're not rolling around. Again, we get the guard, but they're not the uh, <coughs> one, one a single title, right? No, no. But yeah, not a title. Um, the only thing well, is, you just have to make sure you have token support mm-hmm. to keep refreshing them to do the ignition attacks. But um, <clears throat> well, I wait till we get to that, and we'll yes. talk more in detail about how to render. I got. I've been thinking about great, great, great ways to run that, but just just on the ships themselves. Right, let's about the ships right. themselves. We've got the carrier, the vendor two, basically what I think is going to be the battleship vendor one. Again, very similar but different enough where they have their pure roles. Right. So, um, <clears throat> real quick on the upgrade slots. Again, the vendor two. One thing that sets it apart, it has the defensive retrofits. So you can put defensive upgrades on there. But what sets the uh, Venator 1 apart is the Venator 1 gets the fleet command. Right. So again, this is one of those ones where you combo it, where you want, if you want the fleet commands, you need to bring the Venator 1. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, which is why I like, I think what we'll, you'll see the most for me, especially, is running the combo of the Venator 2 and Venator 1. Right. The carrier, well, Venator 1's battleship, but also giving out fleet commands, right. whatever fleet command that is. Um, Again, you need token support. You so again, these guys are cheap enough where you can actually run two of these and a support ship, because that's what the bad right tomorrow I did a consular with, and, and you know, you're able to fit it all in. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't do it exactly with the consular, but you could do the like comsnet on that or a Pelta, right? To feed the commands that you need for the Venator to get the fleet command to go off. And on that, the, in the great combo, I can just see is all fighters follow me. That's what I was thinking. Same thing. To boost up the speed of your Y wings and arcs, right? For the carrier, right? So the Venator ones I can use here. You're just getting it squad commands from comms netting over, right? From your support ship, while this thing is pushing and commanding right. your um, bomber fleet yeah. moving forward at speed three or more. Right. So um, it's. Uh, I, th- I think these. I think more than any other ship that we've seen in the Wave 10, right. more than the Providence, more than the Recusant, I mean, I, we will see multiple Recusant builds, or oh, multiple, yes. but I don't think we're going to, I think what we'll see is like dual builds where it's two Recusant light destroyers built the same to go for it. Right. I think what the Venator is unique is that I think we're going to see a lot of builds where we're going to be seeing the version one and twos together. Right. Complementing each other, not built the same, mm-hmm. um, built in the respective roles. So, I really like that just on the face of it, how they both have very unique, very clear cut roles, and yes. they're so different yeah. from each other. Yeah. So, I really like that about Venom. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. can't tell, both of us are very excited about the Venom. Yes, oh, it's I not love it. just because he's a girl, but it's yeah. because it's an iconic ship. It's yes. a beautiful ship. I mean, I love it. Um, I really do. I can't wait to fly it myself. And I mean, it's just like he's talking about. I really don't know which one I'd fly first. Because I only have one, mind you. So I don't know which one I would fly. Well, you can borrow mine. I remember I have two now. Yeah, I know. So, I can borrow you. mine. I can borrow yours. But um, I, I'd be thinking it'd be interesting if you did a home, our own homebrew games that we do sometimes, mm-hmm. where you could add a vendor into one of our. Uh, homebrew games, right? We'll see what you do with that. I, I it would be very, very interesting to me. But um, I don't think it's midway with a vendor in there. So I'm like doing one thing yeah. on a battleship, or it could be a carrier. But right. uh, it'd be interesting. Well, I can already tell you right now with the 600 point game. Right. I, we need to get a 600 point game in the New Republic stuff. Now that we've got more. Right. Um, or Clone more stuff. I want to run a triple vendor list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And basically what I want to do is run two Ven 1s as my carrier, or Ven 2s as my carriers. I have right. a Ven 1 as the battleship with the fleet command. Yes. yes. With the fleet command. Yeah. Um, so, maybe by the end of June. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's not on the schedule, but uh, I have it in my mind that I really want to run a 600-point game where 
not, not, I have access to three vendors for a triple vendor list. The problem is the squads. I need to get. We need more squads. Your bottom line. Well, you only have one. Right. But I mean, yeah. But we need to get more packs. Yes. Come on, guys. Re-release yeah. card packs and the upgrade card packs and squad packs. Come on now. Let's get these manufacturers going. Get them out there. Yep. Or all you scalpers out there, if there are any scalpers watching my channel, you can be reasonable and maybe just only do a 50% markup right. as opposed to 250% markup. Yeah, that'd be nice. Please. So anyway, rant over, we're moving on. All right, so let's go to titles. Yes, please. And I love these titles. This is one where, again, you can tell I'm really excited. Again, I love the vendor. <laughs> this, is what, this is the reason why I'm actually investing in Clone Wars stuff now. Right. And, um, and I'm only going to be doing the Republic. but. Um, it is a juxtaposition. I love the Empire and the Imperials, but I've also loved the Jedi. Yeah, I know you They're diametrically opposed, but the fact is now I can play both. So ironically, it's very ironic. They yes, the Jedi, but I also uh, love the Empire and right. Iran and, so and all that stuff. So it's put in front. Yeah. So first, let's go over. Uh, we'll just go cheapest to most expensive. So let's start with the Tranquility. Hmm. So this is one that you guys will see tomorrow debuted. It's three points. Wow, cheap. Yep, very cheap. Um, but I found that it was actually kind of unique and very effective on um, what it does. So what it does is, while you're defending, after the spend defense token step, if you spent fewer than two defense tokens, so basically one or zero, mm -hmm. you may move up to two shields from one of your whole zones to the defending whole zone. If you do, the number of shields in that zone cannot exceed a maximum of six, and you cannot recover shields while any zone is greater than its maximum shield value. So similar to the one that we saw on the, uh, 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 the Gilded Ages for the Rekison that we saw yesterday. Right. Yeah. Um, but this one isn't a one shot. No, so the Gilded, Gilded Ages was well, it, but the Gilded Ages also had unlimited. Basically, right. the Gilded Ages you discard right. your uh, eBay, your not your eBay, your redirect, right. and you can move as many shields as you want. Boom, into one whole zone up to right. six. Yeah. This one you can only move from one whole zone, and it's up to two. Mm. So it's a bit more limited, but it's basically like having a free engineering token. Yes. Because yeah. with an engineering token, engineering value of four, that gives you two, that's you need two right. shields to a whole zone. Right. Um, it's not as flexible as the engineering token because you can only move from one whole zone, but I found that using it, uh, a teaser for general, you see that I used it to, to good effect. To basically keep, to just move shields around through the whole zone I was getting attacked, I was exactly. taking shields from where I wasn't going to get attacked. Yeah. Just keep putting shields there. No, that's so, right. That's a great um, But you just have to be judicious with your defense tokens. You can only spend one defense token or less. Right, right. Which is hard. It's, it's hard. So I had to be very think about, all right, is this one where I need to spend multiple defense tokens? Mm -hmm. Or can I be um, conservative here to just spend one right. and be able to move some shields to prepare for the next attack coming in? Yeah. So I think this I think this is a fantastic title for only three points. It's all yeah, the cheap. Three points? I mean... Three, three points to basically get a free engineering yeah. token. Right. Essentially, what you're getting after every time you defend, right? To move shields around. So yeah. I, I think this is a very fantastic yeah. um, card uh, upgrade, or it is an upgrade for a title. That's what it is. <laughs> fantastic <laughs> title for a really cheap cost. Right. I think it's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, the next one is uh, five uh, points. It's the triumphant. Mm -hmm. And I like this, and this is actually unique. I'm gonna, uh, I tried to use it in the Bat Rep PC tomorrow. Okay. You'll see why it didn't come up. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be trying it again because I want to put this on my battleship. Okay. I do my Ven 2 Ven right. one combo. And Which makes sense. This is why. So. so while another friendly non flotilla ship resolves a squadron command, up to three squadrons without adepts, so non Jedi. Right. that it activates can be at close range of you, even if the squadrons are beyond close to medium range of that ship. This effect is not active during the first round. So basically, the Venator that this is attached to gains Old Relay. So yes. for those of you guys not familiar with Old Relay, Old Relay was you activate a squad command, you could then activate those squads off of a Relay squadron, no matter where the Relay squadron was. They FAQ'd it and changed it to where now you have to be in the range of the relay squad and then that relay goes out further. This one, um, the ship that this is on, this ship could be way over here. You could have your carry over here, some tranquil over here. You've got three squads sitting over here. You have to the squad command and then these squads can then activate. Right. Because the distance from this ship to triumphant does not matter. 
No. But this then can activate the squad. We be the relay to activate three squads, but it has to be close range. Right. So it's it's. I think that I'm, I'm trying. I want to try it again, and uh, and I think this is going to be a common title I'll use when I do my Ven two Ven one combo. Oh, I'm saying that. Yeah. And to have, have this be like the four chip, it's the battleship, and I can have squadrons next to it, and I can keep it close to the carrier because right. it's basically acting as relay ship. So right. it's basically yeah, it's a modified version of the old relay rules, and um, it is a bit restrictive. Like you have to be at close range of this one. The squads have to be and not at it, so not Jedi. But that's fine. Yeah, you, you have plenty of ships. Yeah, you got plenty, squadrons. plenty of squadrons. You're using yeah. you're basically using this for like maybe Y wings. That's what I was doing. Or, or arcs that are up right. by this ship, yep. and uh, that can be activated by your carrier over here, yeah. which might have fleet command. Uh, might, well, might have like flight controllers right. or or something like that, mm -hmm. so that will have more squadron benefits on it. Right. So, I just think it's really cool that to basically mm -hmm. have a big ship act as a relay. So, yeah. um, five points. I don't think it's too expensive. I think that's nope. right where it needs to be because no, they down the middle, yeah. giving you the ability of a ship that you don't want. Doing squad commands, no one has to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Why that does run squad commands and then just activate them way over here. So right. I think it, I think it's really cool, and I like that upgrade. Very different from yesterday. Yesterday's titles talking about the rigs were kind of like yeah. unique and complex yeah. and everything. These are very straightforward <laughs> titles. Yeah. Yeah. Very straightforward and not and uh, yeah. don't have to think about them at all about how oh. to use them. Oh. Kind of interesting how that's different. I haven't rolled three yet, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and then this one, again, some interesting combos I'm thinking about, especially with Wolfie Lauren, but we'll get to that. Um, is, uh, but he's not out yet. He's coming into the Pelta expansion. But the Resolute title, and it's six points. Mm. And this one has the uh, tokens on the side. Right. And you can pick, um, you have to pick at least two types, so you right. can't just have all one token. But you pick four of them, so you can do like three and one. And if you, uh, when you resolve a command that matches a, uh, a, when you resolve a command with a dial, you right. reveal a dial. Let's say the example I'd be using is mostly for myself as squadrons. <laughs> so I'll put three squads and an engineering on here. This will be on my carrier. And so I reveal a squadron command. I then get a matching. Uh, I discard one of the squad tokens on here to get a free token. So I get the squad yep. command plus token. Mm -hmm. And just a teaser preview for the Pelto for the <laughs> trade with Wolf Yularen. His special, uh, Admiral Yularen, his special ability is that when you spend a token, you get an additional squad. Oh. Token nice. called Count S2. Mm. So you can turn a, a Venator 2 into a super carrier. Oh, Start with 5. Yeah. Spend your hangar base 6. six. Wolf Yularen token play brings it up to 8. So eight squads from one ship. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so you will be seeing that in the future at some. It's not tomorrow. That didn't happen tomorrow. But once the Pelta comes future. out, in the future. you can. I can guarantee when the Pelta comes out, I will be debuting Admiral Yularen with the Resolute Venator Two for sure. But I think this is great. It's obviously from the way I want it with carrier play. Yeah. Um, but this is great for someone that just wants to maybe uh, do a lot of con fires. Yes, that's true. Um, to fuel the spot, or to fuel gunner right. teams, or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, just put three con fires on here in engineering, or whatever. Right. Um, there's so many different cool combinations of this, just to get the free token. Yeah. And uh, it's a very for, well -rounded. for a command that you're planning to do anyway. So yeah. yeah. I think and uh, I think it's also costed right because you can get some really powerful combos on this. So yes, um, another great title. I think all three of these titles are actually pretty good. Yeah, I don't think I, like, I don't think I dislike any of yeah, them. Yeah, I definitely um, don't dis dislike any of these. So, so yeah, I think I'd use each one sometime or another. Yeah. Depending on what I was doing. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to the two commanders. All right. <clears throat> let's mm -hmm. go cheapest. All right, let's start with the cheapest. 25 points, we have Luminara Unruly. Ooh. So, uh, Luminara Unruly, what she says, when a friendly ship or unique squadron is defending after the spend defense token step. If it spent fewer than two defense tokens, it may either ready one of its defense tokens that it did not use, so like if you've already spent defense tokens during that round and you're getting attacked again, or choose another friendly ship at distance one to five and ready one of that ship's defense tokens. <laughs> wow. So, okay. so this is actually really good because it's if a ship or unique squadron is defending, 
So if I've got like Ahsoka sitting here and she's mm. getting attacked by a squadron, a squadron attack, and I spend, you know, maybe her scatter, right? I could then choose on this vendor to refresh its salvo or its mm. brace or whatever. Right. Or Zeus. Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually use unique squads to help fuel yep. your big ship or just uh, other friendly ships nearby. Right. Or your own ship, if you want to spend yeah. fewer. So I think this is actually very, pairs off really well with the Tranquility title, mm -hmm. where you want to spend fewer than two anyway right. to right. move shields around. Right. So I think this is actually be wow. a good combo of Luminara and Tranquility. And of course, uh, to make this really work, obviously you want multiple ships, you're going to want multiple ships anyway. Right, yeah. But unique squads, keep them close to your ships. Yes. So that when you're getting your squadrons are being attacked, like maybe mm -hmm. by a squad command before you're about to get hit by the ship, mm -hmm. um, you can then start refreshing the defense token yep. on your uh, your big capital ships. So refresh that salvo so you can salvo again right. with a brace, um, etc. So I think this is going to be a really good title. I think 25 points is a steal for this. So I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I haven't played with this yet. Uh, we did Plo. That you'll right. see tomorrow on the bat rep, so we'll come up to that. And uh, we'll talk about Plo here real quick. And Plo, I think, right now is going to be my favorite commander for the Republic. Um, Don't know why. He has 26 points. Mm -hmm. He's very squadron specific. So while a friendly squadron is attacking a ship that is at distance one to three of a friendly ship, so basically, if your friendly ship, if you've got your ship's close range, um, to the enemy ships, it may add one blue dice set to an accuracy icon to its attack pool. That die cannot be changed mm. or re-rolled. So basically, your bombers are getting a free accuracy when they're yeah. bombing enemy ships. A that bomber. is absolutely fantastic. Um, I talk about this tomorrow, you'll see with Robbie. Yeah. I will be using this almost exclusively to get the extra and lock down people's um, redirects. Yeah. So okay. that my bombing attacks are going right on the holes and I want them to. Right. And this is absolutely wonderful. And the second part of this is also great. Well, a friendly squadrons without adept um, gain grit while they are distance one of friendly squadrons with adept. So you basically send your arcs out and y wings out with one Jedi nearby, right. right. and your entire ball now has grit. So it takes right. multiple squads to lock them down. So it's a lot harder to keep them pinned down. Right. So. Um, Right now, of all the, the commanders that are released, uh, I'm not going to count the Phelps yet because I haven't seen it yet. Um, Admiral Yolanda is going to be a close second for me probably, but I really, really love Plo because you guys know I love squadron play. <laughs> and I just love the idea of basically my bombers when they're coming in getting a free accuracy. And grit. And grit. Because I'm <laughs> obviously going to be bringing a Jedi with them right. when coming in. Yeah. So I think he, I think 26 points is a, a steal. I think, I can't believe it's this cheap right. for Plo. So this is an absolute steal. For flow for this commander, and uh, just uh, spoilers for you see me playing flow a lot on this channel really? for sure. No, <laughs> <laughs> so before moving on, we're gonna take a quick break, and uh, but we'll be back here in one second to finish off with the rest of the cards for you guys to just be a couple seconds, right? For us, it'll be a few minutes, but uh, we'll be back in a couple seconds for you guys. Okay, now we're back, <clears throat> so we've got the officers next, all right, of this expansion, three officers. And they're actually all pretty expensive. They're all six points, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if they're all deserving to be this expensive. We'll talk about that here in a second. Mm -hmm. First, let's go with Ahsoka, our favorite Chudruta oh, Jedi, yeah. Ahsoka Tano. Um, this one's going to be tough because if you put her as an officer, then you can take her as the squad. And I love her as the squad. Mm -hmm. But if you want to use her as an officer, what her ability is, <clears throat> when you do a squadron command, each of up to three non-unique squadrons that you activate gain snipe one for each die in their anti-squad armament to a maximum of snipe three until the end of its activation. So basically whenever you activate squads with this ship, up to three of them if they're not named characters, mm -hmm. basically get snipe three. All of your, there aren't any uh, Republic squads that only have two dice, I don't think. They all have at least three. So... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, oh yeah, the Y wings. The Y wings. Maybe you only have two. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. The Y wings. I forgot the Y wings. Um, but yeah, for like your arcs, your uh, Aether sprites, mm -hmm. the V uh, uh, nineteen, 
you'll get snipe free, and snipe can be very useful. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it being able to shoot at distance one to two instead of distance one when you're attacking other squads, keeping them out of engagement range, especially if they have counter. Yes, especially if they have counter. This would be great for uh, sending in some squads to take out the tri fight yep. um, to get them taken out without having countered back. So this is actually this is one I, this is the one one of the ones where I think it is worth six points. This is actually going to be very beneficial. Again, it's only three. So this might be one that you might be activating squads on your Venator 1. Or, uh, I'm talking about Venator, but there's, of course, there's other ships that you have. You have the Acclimator, yes. um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you, you probably wouldn't want to put this on a Ven 2 where you're activating five squads. No. Unless there's, like, out of the five squads, three of them, you want them to go do some slight attacks, break it through, get your bomb, break through the gear bombers through. So you can do some combos with that. Right. But the ability to have three of your squads just uh, suddenly get sniped, and it will be sniped through. You're not going to do this for a wide wings, most likely. Um, again, it can be very beneficial, especially like Rob said, to get through counters on right. enemy ships, whether it's droid tri fighters or you know, like TIE interceptors if you're attack, attacking the Empire, that sort of thing. A wings. Right. Want to kill Char Bay? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Find Char Bay, center in with Ahsoka, <laughs> send in three arcs with Ahsoka, and uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Can be very beneficial. I think it's a really good officer card. Now the funny thing is the it's squadron, <coughs> and she is a great squadron. Yes, I know that's the so thing. That it, is a it's like it's it's like wedge. I know you want you want to bring wedge as the squad, not a, but his officer card isn't nearly as good as no, this. it's four too. It's also cheaper. Four. Yeah, but it, it, I can't remember his cost. But his ability to give them cloak cloak is not nearly as effective as snipe. No, so you can get a bummer <laughs> around. Yeah, you get bomb around stuff, yeah. So you can actually, but it's one of those where, same thing with Wedge, it's like, but I want her yeah, to exactly. Yeah. So, but if you are planning, yeah. like, you know, I'm not going to bring a silk in the, because I love a silk as the squadron, yeah. but if you're not going to bring a silk as a squadron, it'd be a good officer to have. Right. <coughs> Next, we have uh, a silk in the background. Yes. <laughs> um, chasing after Barris Offy. Mm -hmm. Also six points. So Barris Offy, her card is while defending. After the attacker declares the defending hull zone, you then may then you may spend one redirect token. So this is before the attacker attacks. He's already declared his attack. He's got it right. Um, you spend the redirect. If you do at the start of the resolve damage step, so this is after everything has already been spent. Yep. Defense tokens at the very end. You get to choose a different hull zone to be the defending hull zone for this attack. <laughs> <coughs> so that they say, Ooh, that's so nasty. So let's say you're getting attacked here and you have no shields left here. Um, you can, you know, spend, you know, like All right, I'm about to get hit. Yeah. And just spend the redirect before anything happens, and then that, when you start, then take damage regardless of what the damage is, and say, no, I'm going to take it on my port side or wherever. Right. So this is, uh, this is actually it could be very. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure if it's worth six points. But it could be a very uh, good card comboed with other things, especially like if you want to do just a lot of pre-game, pre-attack spending, combine some yes. thermal shields. Um, you spend your redirect token at the beginning, you yep. spend your brace to have their dice pool, and then just send that attack to an opposite hall zone that you're not worried about. So um, I think this could have some interesting play. Uh, again, I, I don't know if it's worth six points. I'm not, I'm not a... I'm not one of the uh, quote unquote math hammer, math armada no. people that do no. statistics and all that stuff, what should be focused on. It just, just, uh, just my intuition is telling me this should probably maybe be four or five points, but um, it'd be interesting to see yeah, get, some, get some defense yeah. combos going on with this. Mm -hmm. So, And actually, I think this would combine with Obi Wan Kenobi, his ability to reduce damage, yes. redirect. So you're still yep. spending the redirect, it's not in the spend. Mm -hmm. I would have to relook at Obi Wan Kenobi's card if it's specifically uh, in the spend defense token step. But it might not be. Might have to look at that. Yeah. Have to look at that. But, but I think it is expensive. <clears throat> this this could help. I don't know. Again, I'm doing this off the you know top of my head trying to run it. But could be potentially be an interesting combo. So you know what? Again, it's a unique card. Yeah. Very different than anything else out there. Um, <clears throat> all right. So this one is one that I have like mixed feelings on. We have Clone Commander. Mm -hmm. Starts with the squadron. And you can use that squadron to refresh it because you have to use squadron refresh, and then after that, you have to, have to do normal tokens. So, his ability is when you do a squadron command, you may exhaust this card, and if you do, you got two abilities. The first one is usable right now, right. 
<clears throat> each of up to three squadrons that you activate without ADEP, so not JEDI, gain assault until the end of its activation. Right. And for those of you that know what, don't know what assault is, assault is, is when a squad is attacking a ship, if they have the assault keyword, they can spend a hit icon to give the ship they're attacking um, a raid token. <clears throat> so you can start raiding people. Right. It's okay. Yeah. You can give uh, three squads assault to go start doing some raiding. Mm -hmm. This actually wouldn't be bad on arcs because they get two dice. So you could get right. like, you know, if you get two hits, you can have one to do damage, one to get the raid type yep. of thing. So on arcs, I think this would be very beneficial since you're rolling two dice. The second part, I think this squad, I mean, right now, as is, if that was it, right. six points is too expensive for this, right. in my opinion. Right. The second half, I think, will be beneficial in the future and make this card worth it, but right now it has no use. And the reason being, second part, each squadron that you activate with the printed assault keyword uh -huh. can spend a die with a hit or accuracy icon to do the assault effect. So basically, you can spend hits and accuracies to get right. raids. They have to have the printed assault keyword, and I just checked before we came back. Yep. No current Republic squads have a printed assault keyword. Mm. So the top part does not allow you to do the second part with the top part squads because they right. they're just gaining it till the end of the, the uh, activation the assault it's not printed on their card so obviously we're going to be getting some republic squads in the future that have the yeah. assault keyword so that's played at some point because right. yeah. they you know they got a card got a card ready for it but uh, as is right now I don't <clears throat> I mean I might try this out just to try it out but yeah. I don't see this scene play at all actually. Um, especially for six points. Until, basically, Republic Squad Pack 2 comes out, or whatever it's going to be. <laughs> what yeah. you, because then, this could actually be very beneficial when you send mm -hmm. in... You, because this one, the second part, is not restricted to three squads. Right. The second part is, you could actually load up, you know, you know this squadron swarm that you're mm -hmm. setting up. Um, maybe on your vendor or two, we right. have five squads. With the assault keyword, whatever those yep. squads are, actually, whatever they're going to be, and uh, send them in and just raid the crap out of somebody, and uh, they can't do anything. And they can't do anything. <laughs> so it's um, so that's where I can see a lot of benefit. Yeah. Um, the top part's not bad. Again, with arcs, I think the top part would be good because they get the two blue dice. Right. So you can also you can actually do the combo of assault and attack. Um, so, but um, as is, I don't know. I'm kind of like man bees as well. Well, B wings, you only get black and dice. Y wings, I keep saying. Oh, y wings, it's a black yeah. dice. Right. And if you're getting, you know, I just don't know. If, it's one of those things when you're assaulting someone with a bomber. If I've got a bomber, I want to be doing damage. Right. I understand. So if I'm rolling a black dice and I get a hit with my Y wing, I I don't know if I want it because you have to spend it. You don't get to do the damage. You have to spend right. it and give the raid. Yeah. So. I, I think this would be more beneficial with arcs because you get the two dice, or maybe with B19s. Right. I mean, just because, yeah. just to send them in to do some uh, rating. Uh, uh, the assault keyword has always been a difficult one for me because of that. I see people don't use it that much. It's like with Kanan, you don't see them played much. <laughs> Mandalorian Gauntlet Fighters, they have assault, but you yeah. don't see them played much. It's just one of those where if the uh, Rebels, and I don't think they have anything yet, but if they have something like the new. Um, uh, uh, commander that the Separatists have, that we right. reviewed yesterday, yep. we get extra dice when you're fighting someone yep. that has raids. Mm -hmm. I mean, this would be great with that. But well, as yeah. far as I know, the Republic doesn't so have anything have like that. Raid. No. <coughs> yeah, I don't think they have yeah, anything yeah, right. where you benefit from raids. So, but, but oh, sorry. Yeah. So, so he could be a card as a teaser with the con. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's so it's like, hey guys, yeah. Is an officer. Oh, you can do assault. Oh, by the way, oh wait. What do you mean there's nothing else you can do with him after that second part? Oh, there's something. Else. Yeah. Right. So I'm curious. So <clears throat> right now we haven't seen any boarding teams. Nope, come out. Nope. And one thing that uh, I think we can expect to see is some Jedi cards of boarding teams. I mean. Yes, happened all the time. Jedi boarding ships. 
So I'm wondering if there might be some interesting plays in the future, mm -hmm. future expansions, maybe, you know, however long it takes me, you know, something that's going to take for the next month to come out, right? Or, so where you can actually use assault, put raids on, mm -hmm. and then you come in with some Jedi boarding teams yeah. or something that get to uh, use the assault, the uh, raid tokens to do better, better benefits or something. Right. I think that we might be seeing a potential sneak peek theory crafting on Mike Fright Hunt. As is right now, this looks like it's doing nothing. Yeah, like, except for throwing a raid down. And throwing a raid down to somebody. Right. And it's like, that, that's not terrible, but I just don't no, see it being used. It's, it's, it's kind of huge. It's, it's not, not huge. No. It's one of those sort of like, should this card have been released right now? Or should they have waited until an expansion came out with something that's actually going to be using this? Again, I think they just did a sneak peek. Yeah, that's so. it, of a teaser. And yeah. then, and, uh, but I don't know how you get to the most also. Anybody else would get it from that. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think about Clone Commander Wolf. Yeah. Again, yeah, so you guys might know something we don't know. Yeah. And, you know, you might have some fake cards. Oh, wait, you can do this, guys. Oh, nice. Uh, right. All right, so next we got a few. I'm going to save this one for last. But uh, the next one we got a few that we've already seen. Mm -hmm. These are all, I think, duplicates from what we saw in the uh, Providence, the Invisible Hand expansion. Right. We've got Thermal Shields. Right. Again, a really interesting defensive uh, yeah. upgrade. Um, it's it could be someone's coming yeah, in with a large dice pool, starts for a hit me yeah, eight dice or that recusant right. with the Patriots fists. Yes. And, and you yeah. say brace, have your dice pool. You know, yeah. before you even get to roll. Um, it's one of those where I think could really save you um, against large. Dice coming in. Right. I don't think you'll use this hardly at all when it's like three dice, no. four dice coming in. No. Unless it's like an equal, like someone's coming in with like two black, two blue, right? Or or two black and two whatever else, right. yeah. and you want to get rid of those black dice so they can't do the black crit that right. they're trying to activate. So I that's where I think the biggest thing is to get to reduce the massive dice pools. Yes. And also, at least this one I think of just get rid of either black dice crits or special blue dice crits. Right. To prevent your opponent from being able to use those upgrades. Right. Yeah. So, um, again, a, good, a great preemptive defense thing. Mm -hmm. but I think it's actually it's unique. I think it's pretty cool yep. and uh, it is cool. situational, but you know, that's anything situational. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Next, hot landing. Now, this one's interesting. This is a fleet command. Yeah. So it's like intensify firepower or whatever, but it's only three points. That's going for a row, right? <laughs> Well, it's Rebel Separatists, but right now only the Rebel or, or Republic Separatists, but right now only the Republic can use it because it's right. only usable by adepts. And right now we, there are no Jedi Separatists yet. And again, could be a little teaser. A teaser that we're probably getting at least due to I might have farther. But anyway, this one is very interesting. It's very situational again. The first half, at the start of the squadron phase, so it's not happening during the squadron command. So right. you can only either move or shoot. Right. Friendly squadrons with adepts, so your Jedi, gain grit until the end of the phase. So they can basically move to get out of danger. Which is nice. Which is nice. It's basically, nice. you know, if you're not activating them or who knows, we might see some rogue Jedi in the future. Maybe yeah, that can do yeah. the future, who knows. But that's okay. For three points. Mm -hmm. the, thing, the thing is, the, the one thing that makes, gives me pause about that first half is because it's at the start of the squadron phase. It's not... Just yeah. any time. It's not like I can't activate them with the squad to maybe get that benefit. It's only in the squad phase. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the second half, which is separate from that, which I th is a little bit more interesting, when a friendly squadron with adepts, so your Jedi, right. uh, is destroyed, it may choose one enemy ship at distance one to two of that squadron. If you do that ship, games are a great token of your choice. So basically, the Jedi has crash landed yep. onto the enemy ship and then yeah. not raided. Again, it's that whole thing to do with raiding. Again, raids just in general are not bad. No. But uh, interesting, there's combos in the future that combine with this. Well, I guess you could, in a but, way, combo with Wolf. <laughs> well, I don't know if you would combo with but, Wolf. But, but, um, well, I'm just saying, but, um, but for the Republic. But, but Separatists could use that pretty well, actually. Separatists would love this if as, they, soon, as, as soon as they get an adept to this squadron. Yeah. So either way. Well, once the Separatists <laughs> get an Adepts, Adepts yeah. squads, this will be a fantastic yeah. fleet command for additional mm -hmm. Separatists, I think. Um, mm -hmm. They just need the squads to do it. Right. Um, right now, again, it could just be interesting. It's only three points. Who cares? Right. 
you don't want to run an actual fleet command, you have to activate your Spirit of Sun, your Venator 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're wondering, running maybe Swarms of Aether Sprites. Right. Don't need to be named Jedi. Just get your Aether Sprites that have Adept on there flying around. Yep. And when they're about to die, just keep them close to enemy ships and yep. just give out some raids. So, um, it's I think for three points, it's, it's not bad at all. Not bad, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But I think it's just mediocre. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Well, you never know, we might just play it sometime. And see if I can this section. Oh, wait. Wow. Yeah. Alright, next we come up to, uh, I talked about this yesterday. If you guys watched this, we'll hear my favorite upgrade card of all the Clone Wars stuff from the start of the packs to now. Flat guns. I'm not going to go over it again because that was repeating myself from yesterday. I'm assuming if you're watching. Yeah, if you watched this video, I'm assuming you watched yesterday's video. I love flat guns. I love being able to sell my blue dice at long range with my Star Destroyers. This is now on the Chimera permanently in the yeah, yeah, yeah. pit spot. That's all I'm going to say about that. I said enough yesterday. So, <laughs> but Flat Guns is fantastic. And then also, we talked about again, DBY 27s. Again, if you want to do like a defensive salvo build ship, card, but being able to just guarantee when you sell a bet, you're getting at least a hit. If you're stopping with the black bags, you're getting a hit crit. Right. So, fantastic. Again, we talked about this more at length yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you guys watched it. If not, go watch it. Yeah. <laughs> So now, now, what was this card you put down here, man? The spot. Or the S P H A T dash T. Whatever that acronym is supposed to stand for, I'm calling it a spot. And it is basically a super laser that is mounted in the cargo deck of a Star Destroyer. Or not cargo, hangar deck of a Star Destroyer. I believe it was Anakin took a. Oh, it's not an at at, but. Um, but basically, the earlier version of the ads, and he put it in the squadron base. Shooting yeah, up. it's it's the uh, it's those really big walkers that have right, a giant walker, laser yeah. gun on yep. the top that you see in during uh, revenge, or Attack of the Clones right. during the battle. And he mounted it basically in the uh, in the hangar bay. Yeah. So. This is what the thematic thing is going. Yeah, and then you guys also saw this in action. This is actually taken out of the scene from the opening battle of yep. Revenge of the Sith. So. So this is an ignition. It is the first non onager ignition card, so now ships that mm -hmm. aren't onagers there um, can now do ignition attacks. Offensive retrofit, seven points, and it definitely needs to be seven. It's a good cost. Um, it's a modification, Star Destroyer only, and it's also Republic only. So right now, the only thing that fits that is the Venator. Which can only be fit on again. Makes, makes sense, sense because, because that's the walker they had. Yeah, that's what it was originated as. No other ship will have the walker because they <coughs> had a heads up for that. Yes. <laughs> so. so, the first part of this, you decrease your squadron value by two. So this is why I don't think you're ever going to see this on a Ben 1. Why are you taking, or a Ben 2? Why are you taking a Ben 2 with squadron value 5 and you have to reduce it down to 3? No that makes sense. So, I don't think you'll ever see this on a Ben 2 unless someone just wants to. I'm just going to do it just to right. do it. This is going on a Ben 1. But a squadron value three, which is not going down to one. You're not running squads with this ship. This is going to be your heavy hitting battleship with a super laser on it. And it's ignition close. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with ignition, just a quick thing how it works. So I put the tokens away. Anyway, yeah. ignition tokens. And after you're done with your entire activation, so after you move with your ship, you can then place your ignition token within an ignition arc. Right. And I'll get to this more, but. The ignition arc, when you place this on there, is your front and side hole zone. So much more flexible than an onager. The onager is very narrow. But this one's close range. You, like onagers, you can reach out and touch somebody at long range. And even for fortunately, yes, I know. Yeah. But for this one, it's close range, but it still extends your range, though, because you're going close range, and then you measure the next round from there. When you activate, your first attack has to be the ignition. Mm -hmm. Then you measure range from the ignition mm -hmm. to get to further extend your range. And uh, so I'll just keep reading. Um, each of your front, left, and right firing arcs, like I said, are now considered a special firing arc. <clears throat> and then the special battery armament of that is five blue dice and one black dice. So six wow. dice. Yeah, very strong attack. Mm -hmm. After you place your targeting token, so basically you've done with you place yep. your targeting token, then you have to exhaust this card. And while this is exhausted, you can't place any more targeting tokens. Okay. So you still get to attack, so you place the token, next turn you attack, and uh, but then after you move you don't get to do it again unless you find a way to refresh this. Yes. How you refresh this is with the Concentrate Fire Token. Okay. So as long as you're feeding Concentrate Fire Tokens to the ship, 
Which, if you got that card, you should be. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> Which, and then, you know, just a teaser for tomorrow. No matter what you guys will watch, that I did with Robbie. Had this on event one, and I actually had a counselor with munitions resupply. Mm -hmm. His only goal was to every turn be on fire tokens yep. to this ship to fuel up. this. So. so that's how I designed it and built this. <clears throat> one thing I discovered about this, which I think is really fantastic. Oh, good. <laughs> event one. So I think we're going to be seeing lots of Ven ones on the table with the spots. I think we might even be seeing double Ven ones with spots. As long as have the token support. Right. You can have more than one. Yeah. You can have. Yeah. But it's not unique. Right. It's just as many as you want on it. Not as many. But well, each ship can right. have one. Well. Um. Certain. Uh, ships. Right? Yeah. Just start with your vendors. Right. Yeah. So if you have multiple vendors, and I yeah. recommend using a vendor ones, mm -hmm. you can have blow them all up with spots. So. The uh, uh, strategy behind this that I've, I've discovered, and I think you, you'd want to try to do as best as you can, is to line up the double arc. So, you line up somebody in your side arc in front, yep. and you set the ignition in your side. Right in the side, yeah. So your first attack with the side attack is going to be five blue, one black, six dice. Mm -hmm. Then you double arc them with your front arc of three red, three black. Yeah. So now both shots are getting six dice. That is into somebody. Insane. Yes. And then another teaser for tomorrow, which I have now figured out the use for Clone Captain Zach. Oh. Clone Captain Zach, when he came out, he was—I uh, think he's in—he's in the core set. Right. Couldn't figure out what you would use him for. Oh, his, right. his ability <laughs> um, is that you can tap him, and then when you're attacking, um, out of your side or your rear, you get to add one dice of a color. All right, right. cool. Yeah. So now that this card is out, again, preview for tomorrow, I'm just going to tell you, I had, was able to do an attack where I had um, five blue, two black. Right. Because I had clone Captain Zach on my spot ship. Right. So... Clone Captain Zach can hide with the spots is an excellent combo. I'm going to tell you right oh, yeah. now that you're going to see a lot. And uh, basically, because you want to line up the side shot, because you only have four dice out the side. Right. So line up the ignition out the side. Get Clone Captain Zach to give you seven dice on your ignition yeah. attack. And if you set up the double arc properly, you've got your um, front arc of six dice as well. And you even if you want to really just be go all out, with, you would have... So no reroll, but put spinal arm in. No. So you can have four reds and three blacks out the front, along with this. Well, no, you can't no, use spinal arm. It's because this, this is a modification. Right. Right. Um, because the uh, modification, right. uh, the stick and the modification stuff. You can still do like triple E's or reroll circuits. You can still do your black dice, um, ordinance upgrade, right. um, XI7s. I did do that yesterday on the that rep tomorrow, but I need to think about doing XI7s with this just so that you can't read oh your shots coming in. That would be hard. Yeah. That would be horrible. And the most twos. <coughs> yeah. The XI7s? No. Now, the great thing, I don't want to do that. why this is also fantastic for you, even if you're shooting out the front at somebody, if you like didn't line it up right, well, I'm going to place my ignition in the front. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to shoot out the front mm -hmm. with the ignition. Ignition attacks cannot be salvoed. <laughs> so if you've got a ship that's got a really heavy Sabo setup, and, it's flat guns. and it's got flat guns, it's got the DBYs, right. it's a triple Sabo Starhawk, mm -hmm. you're like, well, I'm just going to bring two Ven ones right into your face with my spot, yep. you can't Sabo my machine attack, you so you can't do anything about it. So it's one of those, um, just by having that ignition keyword, it saved you from Sabo with this attack. But there's just, again, there's limitations for how this works. Because you have to place the token after you move, so you're not doing it for round one. You can't do it round one. So you have to, after you move and you're done. You might not be going to do it round one. Uh, well, it depends on ranges. Right, yeah, I know. But um, and it has to be your first attack. So if you move and you place your token down, but then your enemy knows where it moves out of the arc that it's in, um, then, and you have, you know, it's just, you still, it takes practice. Um, oh, sure. Uh, it's one of those if you if you played Onagris before, you already have you'll actually be like, Oh, this is great, I actually full. <laughs> you know, what is this two hundred and seventy degrees right. that I can place my mission arc setting is really narrow band. So if you're if you're familiar with Onagers and played with them before, this will be like riding a bike, um, getting used to this. Maybe doing it automatically probably. Doing it automatically. The main thing that the maximum use out of this is that you need the token support. Right. Make sure you're giving your ship the contract fire tokens so that you can do this every single turn. Um, 
because six five blue one black is you being able to do that and if you can line up again the reason why I would say just line up the side shot double arc double front arc with the front shot <clears throat> again I've said this a, a broken record you're going to see a lot of bend ones with this combo and most likely you'll see bends yeah you'll you see it tomorrow see that. and it will not be the last time you see no, it no, no, so no. let's it, find something bizarre vinegar ones are I think are going to be are just, they're just going to be a fantastic battleship beat stick for the Republic. Oh, easily. So, easily. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> but I also love that it's not, you, you have to get a lot of stuff working together to yeah. get a full use. you got to have the support. We should go play. You love the open play. Yeah, you have to have support token play so you can keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, all that good stuff. You have to make sure you line up the shots right. Yep. So it's, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I love this upgrade and I just, and I'm just glad, it's just so cool that they included this because, you know, it's, you see that random shot happen at the end. Yeah. And it's just like, what is that? What? Yeah. And it took how many seasons of Clone Wars for you to finally find out how Anakin, oh, that I Anakin came up with that? I forget what, know what, I, forget what I, forget, I forget what episode yeah. it was, but it was just one of those random shots you see blinking, you miss it. Oh, we want an Anakin to fly by us from this massive laser, and you're like, what's that? What's that? And that's the you see it. And then they, they go on to something And they go on to something else. But I'm so glad to finally see this, uh, um, fully realized, and uh, it'll be interesting. Um, it does say Star Story only Republic. Again, Venator only right now. Then, but I'm wondering if there's going to be another. Uh, Star Destroyer. And people are predicting yeah. even the victory. It could be because makes sense. Because the victory the next step. The up. victory was a brand new mm -hmm. dream, and they had victories in the Republic. Yeah. So, if they ever do come out with a Republic victory, mm -hmm. um, and it has an offensive retrofit, you potentially put this on a victory. Right. Yeah. If they ever come out with it, so that uh, anyway, love this card. It's great. <laughs> I don't know if you guys realize that, but yeah, like I say, it's not the popular list. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, overall, I think this is a great expansion. Again, lots of cards you're getting. Yes. Lots of great cards. Lots of upgrades. The ship itself, again, I love the model. The model just looks it's great. Beautiful. It's a beautiful. And you guys know I love Star Destroyers. It's my favorite ship, and I just love how this is a mini Star Destroyer. It's the progenitor of the Star Destroyer, and yeah. I love how it's. It feels like the progenitor of the Star Destroyer since I, I've, I've already played with it once. Yeah. Um, you guys will see tomorrow, and it just felt like I was running Star Destroyers just in miniature. And uh, yeah, you could play Clone Wars though. Yes. <laughs> that's, uh, and be happy for it. Like, you know, running Acclimator and it doesn't feel right. Yeah. I wasn't a big fan of Acclimator. No. So no. it felt too much for victory, and you guys know I don't like the victory. So it's just, uh, I, but I love Star Destroyers, and I love how these feel like Star Destroyers. So just I'm happy, happy, happy. Interesting use of the Acclimator felt like a victory. Because but the progression, it, it turns into a. It is. The Acclimator turns into a victory. Yes. Yeah, that, that is the Acclimator, and the progenitor of the victory. Yeah. Which I don't like it that much. Right. But, um, so that's very interesting. Anyway, there we have it. Uh, Rob, your uh, overall thoughts for the expansion. What do you think? What? <laughs> Are you allowed to talk? I've been talking for a while. I, so, hey, so. You've used it. I have not <laughs> used it yet. I have not used it, buddy. Yet. But I mean, I, I really want to. And as I said in yesterday's video, um, I do want to get another um, ben, Benetur. And I actually don't want to get another one of each, except well, I'm not going to get another Star Attack. I'm just not going to do that. But I want to get another one of each. Uh, because I think two of everything is going to be extremely helpful yeah. uh, in a game. It doesn't matter if it's the only things coming out for Clone Wars for a while, mm -hmm. but I think in a game in general, <clears throat> not only can you do Venator 1 and 2, but if you want to do, um, say, two Peltas and a Venator, whatever reason, yeah, you that know, to find that out later on, yep. um, then I would have the ability to do that. Yep. Um, but Just give you options. Yeah. But just Benator is beautiful. I mean, so far I've not found a ship I did not like in the uh, Clone Wars pack. I mean, not really. Uh, okay, hard sells to me, but you do not like the potato. I do not like the hard sell, <laughs> the look of it. I'm sorry. And I blame. I why don't yeah. it? No, it's, I think my second least favorite would be the so, hard sell as far as yeah. it looks. Yeah, so, so. that's my yeah. first. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, the Venator, I can't wait to play it. I really can't. Um, the, the, only, the, the teaser cards uh, are nice, but they're at the same time. Bring the packs. 
Like, he was like, yeah, I just said, Mom, like, yeah, Punk Commander don't Wolf. do that. And then the, <laughs> like, the teasing potential yeah. of Hot Lane, and it's like, yeah. well, okay, that good stuff coming out. I mean, oh, it, Punk Commander Wolf's like, yeah. half the card isn't even usable right, right. now. It's like, come yeah. on. You know, there's yeah. no even possible way to use it right now. Right. I just feel like, yeah, it's just one of those where... But that, that was my only... My only yeah, that, that's... Yeah. But, uh, no, I love it. Like, I love both versions. From what I'm seeing, it's all theory crap that I'm Yes. Um, yeah. um, when I play them, I'm sure I love them even more. Um, I have played some Imperial um, lists, mm-hmm. like two so far, maybe three. And um, if this works anything like them, then I got an idea. I mean, I'm no Ben. Ben's played them all the time. It's like he doesn't play Rebels all the time. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really can't wait to try it. And, oh, can I see so many things I could do with this thing? And it might be Christmas tree now, like I did with the, um, yep. with the Providence, for instance. <laughs> because I want to try everything. Yep. And just see what happens. But, no, I can't wait. And I do love the ship. Great model. Again, I don't mind that it's not as shiny and everything else as, um, the, of the other those ships, because I like that, and this isn't everything Ben can tell you, I like that worn look of it's being used. And I don't mean like being pulled in and out of your storage or like that, but I mean like it's been used in battle. I don't mean scorch mocks and all that, but it's, okay, he fixed up the patches, set it back out, and we gotta go again. So, you know, I don't mind the paint job at all. So, no, I'm quite, quite happy with it. So, all right, guys, we're going to let us know what you think about the Venator expansion and the upgrade cards therein and overall in general. Just comment in the comments below. That'll enter you in for the giveaway for the Venator expansion pack, actually. That's what's being given away for the month of June. And also, uh, don't forget, Admiral Ship Shop, he's providing that. And if you're going to get anything from his shop, be sure to use Downsize at 10, Downsize at 1, 0 for 10% off your entire purchase. That discount code is always in the descriptions of my videos in case you forget. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, take it easy.